In today's video, we're gonna go on a deep dive into a direct environment, and then I'm gonna show you how to learn more through the Robotics Fundamentals Learning Path. First, I wanna show you a direct environment in action. Just take note that here in the .vs code folder, and then in the tools folder, there's a Python file, and if you run it, it'll create this launch.json configuration that lets you run your environments in debug. If I pop over to the debug tab, I can run it, and here we go. It's launching the environment, and it will load a few thousand cart poles. We have a few thousand baby cart poles, and none of them know how to balance. And if you watch for just a few seconds, you'll see that they're already learning. Isn't that amazing? Let's close this, and let me show you how it works. Now what we'll do, I'll hop into that configuration file and the environment file. We'll put a few debug breaks, and then we'll go through it step by step and explain how it works. Here's the configuration file. There's a break. There's a break. Here's the environment file. And we'll put a debug break in each function. Sometimes it's fine to put it just at the top. If it's at a line like this, where it creates a tensor, I find that it, it's kind of funny to debug it because it will stop at each of those sublines. So I'll put it here at the bottom. And there we go. Let's go ahead and run it. The first place it will stop is in the configuration file. And this first value decimation, this means that for every two physics steps, it'll run through the neural network and calculate observations and rewards once. This helps with performance, but be careful because it will still apply those calculated actions every physics step. And so if this number is too high, your actions can become out of date. The episode length is how long each episode will run before the, each of the environments are reset. The action space is how many actions are output from the neural network. And the observation space is how many observations are input into the neural network. And then there are a few other properties for just initializing the environment and then custom properties. The next place that it breaks will be either in the setup scene or in init. I've seen it hit either one first, so be careful. Usually, setup scene is where we initialize the scene as a whole. So the skybox, lighting, that sort of thing. Anything that only needs to be initialized once. And then usually in init, we initialize buffers, tensors, that sort of thing. Next, it will reset all of the environments. Notice that it receives this index, so it will only reset the environments you tell it to. It could be all of them, or it could be just a few. Later on, we'll see the get dones function where we can specify individual environments that we would like to be reset. But this reset index function is where that reset happens. And it's where we typically perform our domain randomization. In fact, you'll see that the joint position is randomized right here. Next, the observations will be calculated. These are then returned and input into the neural network. After that, it goes to the pre-physics step. This is the output from the neural network. Here we collect all the actions from the policy. Next, actions will be applied, and this happens twice, because we had that decimation of two. And after the two physics steps, it'll run to the get dones function, which determines which environments are ready to be reset. And from there, the loop continues. That's it. That's how the direct environment works. Today, we did a deep dive into a direct environment. If you want to learn more about robot learning, I hope you'll check out the Robotics Fundamentals Learning Path. It has a whole bunch of free courses about Isaac Lab, Isaac Sim, artificial intelligence. It covers a lot about manager-based environments. It has a wealth of free classes to help you learn how to teach robots. I've included a link below.